We are Max and Oxana, and over the last five years, we've traveled full time, exploring more than 80 countries all around the world. But when COVID hit and our international adventures came to a halt, we returned back to Canada and spent three months building a home in a van. Meet Benjamin Green, or Benji for short, our 170 inch 2008 Dodge Sprinter. It's time to open up our doors and invite you in for a little tour. black separation between the cab and the living space. This actually has two functions. So one is obviously just to separate the driving area from the living area and two it's made out of down and is a great insulator for our living space. So during the day we actually roll this up and keep it open just like this. Up here is our headliner shelf and you can see we're using this for kind of storage of things that we access quite often. So we've got our bulky sweaters here. We've got a nice wine cooler. And then back there, some more jackets, electronics, and stuff like that. So when this rolls up, it actually just covers everything completely and stays tucked in there for the duration of the day. So nothing falls back out. It's all tight and secure. Okay, moving right along. What do we got here? What we got here is our bathroom. Oh, but what's, what's up on the outside of the bathroom? Who made that pretty thing? We've got this beautiful mirror <laughs> that um, I use daily, and uh, it's a great mirror for uh, checking out the videographer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up we've got our uh, full-size bathroom. So this is our shower, fully functioning, hot and cold water, as well as our toilet. We've got a little light up here and also a, a fan for those extra smelly days. This is also where we keep our dirty laundry. We've got a hook on the side, two hooks actually, that we use for towels. So they're out of our way when we're not using them in between showers. So this curtain is actually a double layer curtain. One layer is waterproof and protects the outside from all of the drops that come in when we shower. And this just gives us a nice um, look for when we close it so it doesn't look like a shower curtain. Down here we have a, a towel for um, washing our face and then we also have a nicely tucked away toilet paper. So it's never too far um, to reach when you're sitting inside. We installed engineered vinyl planks for our floor and we tried to pick out a uh, color that matches the rest of the wood in the van. So it's a great floor because uh, you know we can spill water on it, it's really easy to vacuum, it's really easy to clean um, and it's just very practical for use in the van. Okay next up is our kitchen. So kitchen generally happens in between this counter and this counter. So let me take you to the sink area first. So we've got a 15 by 15 sink, which is perfect size for all of our uh, washing needs and dishes. Uh, this giant slab comes off when we're using the sink and when we're not using the sink or we want to tuck away some dishes, like that spoon that never got done this morning, um, we just put the slab back on and it keeps everything in its place while we're driving. Here on the counter, we also have some baskets for veggies and fruits. We have some uh, paper towels and then we have a, my favorite part of the van is my spice collection and my tea collection. And a nifty thermometer. And a nifty thermometer that always tells us what temperature it is in the van. If it goes below 20, the heat's coming off. Up top we've got two overhead uh, cabinets um, that we use for a variety of purposes. This one is primarily our toiletry cabinets. So we've got um, all of our toiletries here and then a little bit of extra space for... Toiletries and triscuits. <laughs> <laughs> for triscuits, pasta and some other dry goods. 
Um, this is one of our favorite little nifty accessories. It's a light that is um, held by two magnets. So you can take it out, um, you can charge it, it doesn't need any batteries. And it's meant to be uh, motion censored. So it comes on when you open the cupboard and it turns off when you close it. This one is a little bit less organized. This is Max's cupboard. This has all of our control center manuals, which I'll let Max talk about in a bit. And then it's also a bit of a junk drawer for incense and glue and remotes and... Oh, there we go. We've got some light in here now, so you can see. All right. Moving on to uh, the next Max's probably favorite uh, appliance in the van is an espresso uh, coffee machine. The best part about it is that it's not just a coffee machine for Max, but also a device that boils water within 30 seconds. It is the fastest way I can get my tea in the morning and throughout the day and we use it multiple times a day. So it's got two little spouts here, one's for coffee and one's for just hot water and you just fill up this container here with water and it does the magic. We also have a frother so that when we want to have a latte or a cappuccino, we can we? do that here. When we want to have a latte or a cappuccino? Oh. They know, they know, they know. So moving on to this side of the kitchen, this is where most of the cooking happens in the van. So we like to keep the counters clean and just free of clutter and all of our appliances actually are stored um, down below including our induction which comes out whenever we want to cook and plugs right into this outlet over here aside from the induction we have a couple of other appliances in the van that we use almost daily i have an instant pot a toaster uh, a ninja blender uh, and an immersion blender. So fully equipped with anything you could possibly need in the kitchen and everything is run with um, AC power from this one outlet. So other two cabinets uh, on this side of the kitchen are where our cutlery lives. So we've got a cutlery and measuring spoons, cups and all sorts of things like that. And then the next one is where we keep our plates and our mugs and all of our glassware as well. Next up is our pantry. It's a heavy one and it's filled with all of the dry goods that we use um, in our cooking. And so we've got rice and oils and nuts and butter and honey and all sorts of things just like you would in a regular pantry in the home. So this is definitely fully stocked. And just because that wasn't enough space for me, I've migrated another half of the pantry into this cabinet. So the top shelf um, is taken up by some more pots and pans and some of Max's protein bars. <laughs> and then the bottom is where we keep um, other pantry supplies and some of the veggies and some more dry goods. Why, why do we keep it down there? Store. Is it nice and cool? <laughs> do you keep it here because it's nice and cool because even though the van itself can warm up to 20 plus degrees, for some reason the cabinets still stay nice and cool. So it's sort of an extension of the fridge and an extension of the pantry, two in one. On this side, under the kitchen counter, we've got our 115 liter fridge. It's a massive fridge and it keeps all of our groceries um, adequately cold throughout the day and we also have um, a space for a little freezer inside. Last but not least is our under the sink cabinet. When you live in the van you have to make use of all of the space in the van. So we are using the space for garbage, compost, towels. We've got a really handy um, storage rack here. It's got our meds and extra toiletries and the famous junk drawer. Inside we've got all of our plumbing. It's a very tight plumbing job that Max did here. And we've got our pump at the back. Um, and then we have our water filter and a hot water heater that keeps um, water hot in the sink and in the shower. 
Okay, back on the side, we've got two top drawers dedicated to our electronics. So because we work on the road and all of our equipment's always with us, we have built a storage space for all of the electronics that fits everything without any rattling as we're driving. So we've got our iPad and laptops, batteries, hard drives, and a bunch of cords. And the bottom one is where we keep our cameras and lenses and flash and more lenses and more electronics. And it's all once again protected with a foam that prevents it from rattling when we're driving. So to add a little bit of greenery and a little bit of practicality into the van, we've added this um, tri-hold um, pot system where I'm trying to grow some herbs. Some are successful, some are not. We've got some oregano, some thyme, um, some rosemary, and there was basil, but it did not quite make it. Okay, continuing onwards, come into the living space. This is uh, where we spend most of our days in the van. This is where we work, this is where we eat, this is where we watch shows, and hang out. This is a pull-out table. Um, obviously it comes out when we want it to and it pushes back in when we don't and it's out of the way and it allows us to have a lot more space in the van. Down here we've got a few more drawers. Um, these essentially eight are all taken up by our clothing. So on the left you've got all of my clothing, underwear, bras and socks on the top. And then we've got t-shirts, bottoms and then shoes right down at the bottom and the other side is Max's so he's got the same setup with tops, bottoms and a shoe compartment. We have four windows in the back of the van which we installed ourselves so we've got two T-vent windows uh, which open out to the outside and allow fresh air to come in and we have two back windows that um, just allow us to have a really nice view. All the windows have custom made um, curtains that were made courtesy of my dear mother. And they are um, really nice because we can just easily unravel them, put them down and block majority of the light from the outside. If we wanted to just make it more private in here or to block out the light because maybe the sunrise is a bit too early for us. So all of these come down. In the cold winter months, like right now, we also insulate the windows to keep more of the heat inside the van. So we use these insulating covers um, that we made, again, thanks to my mom, uh, that go on the windows. They've got little magnets, so they grab onto the metal of the window and stay nicely put. And then the curtain just goes over top of that. So we've got the rest of the covers in here and this uh, basically acts as an extra storage compartment. We've got some more cans here, don't worry we're never going to go hungry in this van. Um, and then back here we have a nice thick blanket that we also use for lounging on the couch and sometimes we bring it up to bed um, for a really cold night. And the last cabinet on this side is the heart of the operation, our electrical cabinet. But since Max built it, I'm gonna let him talk you through this. Okay, here is our main electrical system of our van. Uh, as Oksana showed you, there is another smaller compartment in the front there, but this is the main heart. So what we have here is we have four 100 amp lithium ion batteries, uh, and they're all chained together to give us power. We have our fuses. Uh, we have our first inverter charger, which is a Xantrex Freedom uh, SW, I think it is, uh, 2012. Uh, this gives us shoreline power from the outside and also uh, inverts electricity inside the van. Uh, we then have a secondary inverter. It's our backup inverter and it allows us to run more electrical components when we're hooked up to power. Uh, another 2000 watt pure CineWave. So this one's also CineWave. This is pure CineWave as well. So they're both pure CineWave. Uh, this one's bolted to the side, so that it allows us to have now 4,000 watts uh, that we can power of items inside the van. Here we have our solar controller, uh, which is made by Victron. Uh, 
Uh, we have all of our fuse boxes, uh, sorry, our uh, breakers, uh, our fuse box for four items, including cabin lights, fan, accessories, and DC outlets. Uh, and then we have our positive bus bar and our ground bus bar and our Victron Energy uh, battery controller right there. All right, so that was the power box, electrical box area. Uh, next we have our bedside outlets. Uh, so here we have a dual bedside outlet with two USBs and a socket. Uh, we have the socket lighter here because this is also where we work from our desk. We have a nifty uh, 83 watt uh, USB-C socket which allows us to charge our MacBook computers. Uh, and then I use the other ones for my charging my Apple Watch and my iPhone. Uh, we then have the controller uh, for the main dome lights uh, in our van and that lives right beside me so I can turn that off and on uh, when we wake up or when we go to sleep. On Oxana's side we have a slightly different setup. We have this nifty little USB uh, slot right here that gives Oxana two USBs on her side for hooking up any electronics that she has. As always, safety first. This is uh, one of our two fire extinguishers that we have in the van. This one lives in the back uh, in case there's a fire at the front and then we have one in the overhead cabinets that lives up there in case there's a fire when we're cooking. Uh, over here we have our water inlet so this is where we put our fresh water into our tank. I believe we have a 25 gallon fresh water tank uh, and that's where we fill up from here. Uh, the actual water tank itself lives underneath our seat so this whole seat area underneath has storage. So we just have an extra towel in case there is uh, any leak when we kind of put water in. Uh, we then have our hose to fill up. It's a nice compact hose. We have a secondary hose in case of an emergency. Uh, and then we have our tank right here. Uh, we also have a tap that we can use in case we need to use pressurized water to hose something off outside, to wash our feet, anything else. This kind of allows us to have that pressurized water. Oh, and I forgot to show you. One of our nifty tools that I highly recommend is a water bandit. Uh, this pretty much allows you to hook up to water that doesn't have a threaded hose pipe connector piece. So you can kind of put this on any tap and fill up with your hose. So it's very good, especially when you're having a hard time filling up fresh water. Uh, this just goes straight over top and allows you to fill up. So that's that cabinet. Over here is the messy cabinet. So underneath here is where we keep a lot of our longer term storage. These right here are on struts, but because we have the cushions on right now, it's obviously forcing it down. But if we take the cushions off, these will stay up with these struts. Uh, so we have everything down here from a extra bucket in case we need it for anything. We have our toolbox, bags, camera bag, suitcase, uh, some more tools here. Some extra clothes that are for summer, but right now it's not summer anymore, so we don't use them. Uh, so it's pretty much just one big giant storage area, which does good. Uh, what else do away. we have there? This? Yeah, what's taking up the most room in this uh, wonderful storage space? Oh! Yeah, there's an inflatable kayak down here. <laughs> <laughs> which we, uh... And how many times have we used that? We haven't used it yet. We will use it when it's warm out. <laughs> uh, so we do have an inflatable kayak in here, which we've really uh, squished into this corner, which is lovely because it doesn't take too, too much of our space up. Uh, and hopefully we'll use that when it gets warmer out and get some cool drone footage of that to share with you guys. Uh, so that's the undersea compartment area. All right, next up we want to show you our bed and how our bed works. A lot of people have been asking us how it works, so we figure this is the best time to show you guys as well. So the first step to taking down the bed is we have two safety hooks, one at the front and one at the back. Uh, these are bolted on to the main frame of the van and it's a strong nylon rope which is hooked up to an aluminum carabiner which is then hooked on to our 8020 aluminum here and that helps support it so that the rope isn't doing all the work when we're bouncing up and down down roads. Uh, over here this is just our remote for our diesel heater. Uh, so our diesel heater is super warm, it keeps us warm at night and during the day winter is here and this just allows me to control it at night time from bed because we always turn it off when we go to sleep. First step is to unhook this safety switch so I usually just lift my shoulder a bit and make sure that this is off. I also have to do that one more time in the back. So once those are down we just have to make sure that we put mats down on both the table 
and the backrest to make sure that everything is nicely protected so we're not scratching our nice desk or our backrest area. Uh, and then we open up our cabinet here. So Oxana briefly showed you this before. Uh, this is our control panel for the front. So here we have everything from fan, pump, uh, uh, heater, uh, depth sounder, which is this control panel right here, which controls our fresh water, uh, tank heater, and water pump here. Uh, death set, uh, DC outlets, fridge, deck wash, which is the light and fan system in our shower, and then light bar, which controls our light bar that goes around. We can also control that via an app and change any color we want. Here we have the Xantrex controller, so this controls our giant charger inverter. Uh, and then we have a monitor here for our Victron solar charger, or sorry, battery monitor. So it tells us how much battery we have uh, and all that kind of stuff. Here is the MPPT controller. I'm currently missing the cable for this. It is installed, it is not working yet. So this controller right here is for a winch. We have an ATV winch, which puts our bed up and down. Uh, and it runs through a set of pulleys that come all the way down to right in here which is where the winch lives. It is attached to an L-track, which is against the panel of the van. So our van actually came with L-tracks, so that's why we decided to use that, as the L-tracks can support 3,000 pounds or something like that. So it's way more than what our bed is and way more than what the winch is rated for anyways. So uh, that's what we have there. And now let's show you how this bed comes down. Mind the mess. <laughs> Bed is down. Uh, as you can see, the ropes are here. They actually operate through some sailing pulleys, which go all the way across, and all the cables, as I said before, meet up over here and go down to the winch. So once our bed is down like that, we are free to climb in. There's nothing else we have to do. We just hop into bed. We typically use our feet, and there's a little bit of a gap right here that we kind of just put our foot and put ourselves into bed. We have a super comfortable bed. Uh, it is comprised of a four inch uh, gel memory foam and uh, two inches of a latex memory, a uh, latex mattress topper. Uh, so it's very, very comfortable. It's very, very cooling. The latex on top is absolutely wonderful. Uh, I wish we could have a complete latex mattress as it is way better than memory foam. Uh, but we just have those six inches and it's plenty of comfort. Uh, we have a 14 inch memory foam mattress uh, at our house in Costa Rica and this is just as good as that. Uh, we then have two pillows each and we have a nice warm uh, duvet from Ikea which keeps us very warm at nighttime. So we also have two Max Air Fan Deluxes inside the van. So one is right above our bed right there which has the insulated cover on it for now since we're not using that fan because it's winter. And the other one is over here in the kitchen to make sure that we can properly ventilate when we are cooking. Uh, the, the van also has six uh, dome lights on the main roof, uh, which is right here, two, two here, and then two behind Oxana. And then we also have two more that are actually attached to the bottom of our bed. And that's why sometimes in our videos, you'll see this dangling breaded uh, uh, cable right here. And that's because that feeds the lights that go to where our bed is. Because if we didn't have that, then we'd put up this bed and we wouldn't have lights where we're working. So we needed that. Uh, we also have these nice strip lights that go all the way around the edges of our van. And it goes underneath and it goes through our cupboards as well. Uh, so that just gives us a little more extra light. And at nighttime when we're watching a movie, sometimes we want to throw on that uh, more relaxed mood lighting. So the next thing to talk about is our paint job. So just a little bit about the outside of the van. Uh, we decided to go with a truck liner for our cover. Uh, so you see here it's a very rigid type of paint. Uh, and then Oxana's brother helped us create this really cool design on the outside. Which, as you can see here, has the mountains, has two bears, big bear right here, small bear right there. Uh, so he helped us uh, stencil this out and we kind of sprayed this onto the van. It is a truck liner uh, that people typically put in the back of their trucks uh, just to help protect the trunk. Uh, and it is made from recycled tires. It's a special product uh, that 
originates from Australia called Bully Liner. So another common one that a lot of people use in North America is Raptor Liner. Uh, this is something similar. I chose this one over Raptor Liner because you can do touch-ups. So with Raptor Liner, you can't touch it up if some part got scratched off. You'd have to do a whole big section. With this, uh, you can just grab a paintbrush and touch it up again. So, and it's a little bit less uh, environmentally toxic. So I wanted to go with something like that. Okay, so up here we have our solar panels. We have two 300 watt uh, panels. They are commercial grade. So these are typically panels that you would find in an array at a solar farm or on a house somewhere. So they are 24 volt instead of the 12 volt ones. And what this means is it's a lot cheaper per uh, watt to buy them. Uh, and they typically generate, I think, a better return for your money than the other ones. They fit pretty good on our van. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't actually go past this part. Because our van curves up, you can kind of see a bit of it here, uh, but that doesn't impact us driving at all, and we have them towards the back. We wanted to put more solar on, but we couldn't because we have two fans. So 600 watts is what we have, and we haven't had any issues since then. Whenever there is no sun, which is quite a lot these days, and Canadian winter, we do have an alternator charger as well. So when we are driving, uh, we typically can regain around 50 to 75 amps per hour uh, from driving. That would just go straight to our battery bank from our alternator at the front. So that's one of our sources of power. Over here on the side, we also have our inlet for our uh, shoreline power. Uh, so right here, this goes right to where our battery bank is, which is back here. And we just use a regular extension cord here and we hook that up to a regular outlet 15 amp outlet system and that helps charge our battery bank and allows us to make some delicious meals over here at the back we have a backup camera so that didn't come with ours some vans come with it naturally ours did not uh, so we had to install that one highly recommend it uh, i don't know how you could drive one of these vans without it even using the even having the back windows i think that is a crucial component uh, and it's quite easy to install so i highly recommend anyone do it uh, if you if you have one of those you can obviously hook it up to the front of your vehicle uh, where you have your apple carplay uh, video screen or anything like that so highly recommend it well hope you guys liked our van tour today we were glad to show you what we created and what took us three and a half months to build uh, but as always, we maybe not, have not covered everything. So if you guys had any questions for us, we do want to create a Q&A video uh, where we show all the different things that you guys are asking and maybe go into a bit more depth on some certain things. So if you have any questions about our van uh, and what we've done or how we're living in it, uh, please comment below in the, in, in the comment section with any questions you have and we'll be sure to uh, answer them in one of our future videos. Take care.